The issue of hijacking of buildings has been in the spotlight recently following the fire that broke out in a hijacked building in Johannesburg in Marshalltown last week, killing 77 people. Now, the issue of hijacking of buildings is not new in South Africa. And according to research, building hijacks in the country are primarily the work of government representatives rather than of homeless people or illegal immigrants. Now, the question is how many lives must be lost before this problem is addressed. Bahai Tsu, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined in studio via Zoom. That's the MMC for Public Safety in the city of Johannesburg. Councillor Dr. Mchini uh, to speak to us about the equality of housing in the city. And uh, just, uh, you know, the general state of the city as to, you know, know knowing that uh, city officials and uh, some other government officials have been inspecting buildings in the CBD there. He's joining us now. Uh, Dr. Mchaku, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. No, good evening, uh, Tawo. And good evening, good evening to your, your viewers at home. And thanks for this opportunity to really clarify the issue of the hijacked buildings uh, in the city of Johannesburg. This is a syndicate. That's number one. There are individuals who, um, number one, who are able, while you are sitting here in the studio and you are owning a building, they can change the ownership. And we're still having, in the, in the Department of Home Affairs, a sort of a Department of... Um, of public safety, we we on we put in the undercover unit to really check in terms of what is happening on that. And these buildings, um, what happens with them is that they they get hijacked, or some of them they are abandoned by they are by the owners, maybe due to death or just to to mere location and all of that, and also the lack of paying of security because some of the securities that used to guard these buildings back in the days. They just never got any, um, no salary, no nothing, and then they just let the building be. So when we inspected well, some of the buildings, they especially the one in, in Florence, there's a building Florence um, uh, a house, it's, but it used to be a, you know, the hospital. Um, there's no electricity, there's no lights, it's dirty. Uh, people have built squatter camps inside an informal settlement inside the building, which creates a you know a you know the hazard. And then also you have another one called Vanin Court. Vanin Court also has got no lights, no electricity, no ablution facility. Um, it's dark, and uh, you know people are, uh, are, are well in the majority of this building. People are, are putting up live uh, fire because it gets cold at night and there's no electricity. Mm -hmm. And all of that. So these buildings have been condemned by the EMS. We've done this inspection using the Fire Brigade Act that you shall have fire extinguishers, you shall have emergency, you know, uh, exit points, staircases, and all those things. And MMC, also... MMC, sorry, sorry to no, interject. Sorry to interject there, yeah. MMC, but I just wanted to say, to know, I mean, you are saying that you are pledging to reclaim the hijacked uh, buildings as the city of Chobik, but I'm interested in finding out, you are doing inspections now. What happens after? Because we've seen uh, officials making inspections, you know, previous yeah. years, but what will happen now, uh, you know, given the fact that uh, obviously after inspections, you will leave yeah. and those people will still stay there in those buildings. Yeah, when when the when the city officials were doing the inspection, right? Of course, they will get a court order so that people can be relocated. I don't want to use the word evicted, just to be given an alternative um, accommodation. But due to the lack of housing, the, the the backlog, and also the lack of the transit houses. Because when you take them from this building that has been hijacked, dilapidated, and non-compliant, you must take them to another building where now they'll be able to be there. So they'll be able to be there, pay their services, and, and, and all of that. But what I asked the guys, I said, you have a building here. This building has been condemned by EMS. It's going to catch fire. 
is going to fall. What do you do? You can't wait for an alternative accommodation and knowing that there's a lack of uh, completion of buildings and there's a lack of uh, housing and all of that. I said, now you are having now something different. Uh, and, and then I asked them a question, did the judge, when they gave these orders that people must be relocated, uh, you know, uh, did they take into account that, or do people understand that when the EMS have closed a building due to non-compliance, people need to move ASAP? So uh, we tried a lot of stuff. Um, look, we, we, we said, okay, uh, the shelters and all of that. So while we're busy inspections and all of that, there came the NGO Seri. Um, I have no problem with them and all of that, but I think that our encounter was more of an arrogance. Because I said, I understand, I fight for the poor because I'm coming from the EFF. But the way that you are handling yourself, you are saying that people must stay in these condemned buildings. We need to say to ourselves, the buildings are condemned, they're going to fall, they're going to catch fire anytime. Let's come, let's go and get an alternative accommodation. You can't give them a sentient kind of a house. You can't mm -hmm. give them an ideal uh, of a house. But at least let's sit down and say, what can we do? You can have uh, temporary shelters or you can build temporary windy houses, uh, temporary tents for now. But those tents must be properly, properly controlled and regulated with time frames. So I'm bringing that on the table. I even said, let's audit. They even audit the people who are there hijacked these buildings. And some of them can afford. And I asked them, my man, why do you stay in a condemned building? Because you can go and rent in a low cost. So I said, let's, start, let's not look this thing on an entirety. Everyone, like let's say a, a thousand people in that building. Let's do a case by case mm. start yeah, well, MMC, and, and relocation. They... So, so Oseri understood that, yeah. Yeah, in the interest of time, yes. MMC, I mean, the city of Johannesburg is the owner of the building, Usindiso building, that uh, was gutted by fire there, uh, I mean, recently. Yeah. Uh, do, don't you think that uh, as the city, sh you should have known or should have been aware of the uh, conditions there? And also as the public safety MMC, just in brief, um, you know, after seeing the state of the city and the quality of housing, um, are, are there plans in place, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, uh, your people in the city of Joburg are living in safety environments? Oh, look, okay, in, 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 in relation to the building that actually got burned, GFIT did a raid there. They've arrested an individual who was collecting rent there, was taken and processed by the police. The, the city has been aware of the building and they've been trying to evict people from 2020, I think from two years back. They've been pushing and pushing and pushing. And is this thing of... Uh, getting an ideal alternative accommodation. This ideality that actually brought in by the NGOs, of which that's why they say that NGO is what would be said. I said, let us be reasonable here because the buildings are, you know, they are not very, very good. So what we are doing right now, I've, we're just coming from inspecting a, a pound, a land, which is owned by JNPD, was supposed to use for impound. I said to the guys, the NGOs and everything, for us to avoid and also for you guys to be petty and want these, this ideal uh, alternative accommodation, let's sit down and say we can do a temporary arrangement for now so that we can take the, the people, put them in, in a sort of a wind houses, something that maybe it, it's distant and make it decent for now so that we can take them out renovate the you know the, 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 this building and turn it into a low cost housing of which as i said other people do uh, 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 they are having permanent job they can afford so 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 that is what i'm saying that let us let us have days that land there let us not be sort of we want this ideal stuff let us and, and be arrogant every time when the city wants to do an initiative because even an initiative of this nature i said but Siri, uh, the, the buildings are falling. All we can do now is temporal structures so that we can avoid this thing. And, and then I said to them, let us target critical buildings. 
like your Remingtons, your which have uh, the, the structural has been condemned, your Venin Court, your Casamias, the ones that we know, and Casamia as well, which is which are bad. Like the, 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 there's a lot of dead cats and there's waste dumped inside. MMC. Let us do those things. And then I said, I'm offering this impound. We are not going to uh, uh, use it. So that's why you saw at the CM. The CM was there today. The EM was there. Joshko was there. Everyone was actually there to go and view that, that land, so that we can start putting proper temporal, you know, the you know, you know, the the structures for the people at least to be able to move that site. We do a proper renovation, low cost houses, and take them back again. Those who wants to come and those who can afford. MMC, unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but thank you very much for taking the time and talking to us. I hope that uh, I will have you on the show just to talk more on uh, issues of yeah. safety in the city of Johannesburg. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for making the time. That was sure. MMC for Public Safety, <clears throat> Dr. Anthony Chaku, talking to us about the issue of hijacked buildings in the city of Johannesburg. The conversation does not end here. After the ad break, uh, we continue with Operation Dudula's Isaac Lesole on the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you just joined us tonight, we are unpacking the long time uh, issue of the hijacking of buildings, uh, you know, in the inner city of Johannesburg following the tragedy that happened in one of the hijacked buildings last week. I'm talking about the fire that killed 77 people and left scores injured. Before the ad break, here we spoke to MMC for public safety in the city of Johannesburg, Dr. Mkini Chaku, just to get a sense of understanding of uh, what government is doing to address uh, this worrying issue. Now joining us in studio is Isaac Lesole, who is the leader of the Operation Dudula's Advisory Board, to give us his insights on the matter. Uh, Isaac, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, we've, we've got a serious issue on, on our hands as, uh, you know, the city of Johannesburg. Uh, particularly the influx of migrants uh, in, in, in the city and, and then you have to accommodate them. Uh, you know, when incidences such as this happen, then, you know, there's quite a lot of quagmire, if I may put it that way. People go left, right and center trying to piece the pieces together. Let me get your sense as Operation Dula, particularly on this very issue of hijacked buildings. Tabo, um, the, the issue of hijacked buildings is bigger than what we see. I must tell you first that uh, the it's not only hijacked buildings. There are land parcels that are hijacked. There are houses that are hijacked, even in affluent suburbs. I mean, the, you'd go to Bramley, uh, you'd go to Santon here, right here around Devonia. There are there are a number of hijacked houses. You go to Soweto, you find houses that are hijacked. And to a large extent, what you would find is that uh, the people that are behind this, and I know that other you know, uh, leaders would not want to put a face to this. Face or nationality, but I'll tell you this for free. And as Operation Tujula, we believe that the, the reluctance of government to deal with the issue of illegal immigrants is the reason why we're sitting in this problem. But the second important thing is that you cannot have a government that reacts so much only when something as big as this has happened. It is because you have allowed this situation to go on for this long, and because now you, you are making international news because of the lives of individuals that, 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 that have been lost, you're now starting to look like you're serious about this issue. This is, um, um, we're dealing with symptoms here. There's a bigger problem, and that issue is, is um, illegal um, uh, immigration. So, so I think from, from that point of view, um, it must be understood that from, from where we stand, we're saying that it could have been resolved, it could have been dealt with, but you have a very lazy government. I mean, speaking about the issue of hijacked buildings, you know, continuing unabated. I mean, we've seen this uh, a few years ago also with uh, a lot of inspections that have been happening from government officials. But it seems like these inspections are just inspections. At the end of the day, they just leave those people in those buildings and then you have a situation like this happening. It, it is for that reason that we believe that um, 
uh, government should be, or the leaders that are responsible in these departments should be charged with murder. Because you're now sitting with a database of buildings and properties that you know for sure that are not good for people to stay in. You've done your inspections, you know that there's risk in that building. You allow it as a city. So when there are people who die in the same building that you have a record of, you come back and you make it look like it's a, it, it's a surprise. No, it's not a surprise. You have known. It's like driving a car that's not roadworthy. When you, when you get onto the road with that car and you kill somebody or you die, you would have known. So this, this is outright murder. This mm. is murder and government must take responsibility because they've known, especially the city of Jobek. JPC knows exactly. It's not only that building for the record. There's a whole lot of other buildings. And the city of Jobek is sitting with this record. They know these buildings. You inspected them, but you continue to leave the people in the same buildings when you knew that they were... They were, not, they were not fit for purpose. Let's talk about the NGOs. Um, you know, NGOs such as the Helen Sussman Foundation, the SERI, uh, you know, they've been at the forefront of, uh, you, you know, the back and forth court actions with the city of Johannesburg. And now there's a blame game that's happening, uh, that you are the ones that are actually, uh, you know, impeding on this whole process of evictions and all these kind of things. Um, as you're saying, government should take um, um, responsibility of the incidents that are happening because they have the record of these hijacked buildings. But the NGOs, their role in this whole process? You know, you, you're talking about your Siri, you're talking about your Helen Sussman Foundation. These are just thieves. They, they, from, from Operation Dudula, we believe that these are just thieves that are thieving from these same people. Remember that... Uh, Think about Siri. It depends on um, donations and subscriptions from the people that are trading on the streets. And the only brand promise that they're giving them is that we'll keep you in the country. So Siri and others and their friends will go to court and say to the country, suspend your immigration laws because the quicker you get rid of these people, you are, you are affecting our revenue. So they want to keep these people in the country for, for, for revenue purposes. But because you have a government that's so lazy, but rather corrupt to a large extent, you allow these people to continue unabated. Nobody does anything about these things. And, and you wake up the next morning, um, Siri tells you, I um, mean, Helen Sussman uh, went to court, I think filed yesterday, to say that, okay, you can't take, you can't deport these people. Yeah. How, how, how sad this is. But you see a government that is at war with itself. I mean, in the morning, uh, the minister and the presidency would go on television and say that this government is not responsible for um, uh, housing Ill illegal immigrants. In the afternoon, the minister in, in social development says that, can you please walk into this building? This is where we will take care of you with our cost, with our money as a country. Now you've taken an illegal person, you've now given them comfort and you pay for them from our purse as a country. A government that's in trouble with itself. As I give in 30 seconds uh, before I let you go, is there anything that you will be doing as Operation Dutula now to make sure that accountability uh, is there, either between government, either between these NGOs, but somewhere, somehow, someone needs to account? The, the one thing that we're going to be doing now is to force um, authorities to verify every single person who is in these hijacked buildings, because these buildings would have criminals those that are, that are also South African, so they must be verified. And every other single individual who's in the building, who's not a, a legal uh, um, a migrant in this country, must be deported. So our action uh, from now moving forward will just be making sure that all, every single individual who's an illegal immigrant in this country is deported to their respective countries. Isaac Lesuale, thanks very much. I wish we had more time, but much appreciated for coming. Thank you so much. That was uh, the leader of Operation Dudula's advisory board, Isaac Lesuale, helping us uh, with the discussion about the hijacked buildings. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we return, uh, we are joined by Magashule Ghana, who is the national organizer of Rizam Zansi, just to give us his uh, contention on the issue of uh, human settlement following the recent media statement on the party, you know, releasing on the matter. We will take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are wrapping up our conversation on the hijacked buildings. We are now joined by the national organizer of Razem Zanti, that uh, Makashule Gano is joining us in studio. Now, Makashule, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening on the show. I mean, your media statement that was released, uh, you know, you are saying that uh, they should stop using uh, this incident uh, for political grandstanding, you know, scoring political uh, points there. What do you make of this uh, halabaloo, uh, you know, the jostling of the mic, if I may put it that way, by the different political parties? Thanks very much, Tabo, and thanks very much for having us here. You know, I, I warned immediately after the, the tragedy, and I send my sincere condolences to the families, you know, and a speedy recovery for those that are in hospital. We said as Rizm says, that there's always this tendency in South Africa that when there's a tragedy, uh, now the politicians uh, and the police want to do this PR stance. That's why like now today, you'll hear that the MMC was out raiding a building, inspecting a building. These buildings were there last week before the fire. Everyone knew that these buildings are unsafe, but it had to take the, the, the death of 74 people, for them to come into action. And what, what will likely happen is that this thing is just uh, going to last for a few weeks. You know, like, uh, not even a week. Mm -hmm. It's just like you are waiting for the next tragedy to hit before you move towards the, that side. I mean, like, two, two, week, two three weeks ago, everyone was uh, out in Rivali after the Zabazama killings. But if you go to Rivali today, you won't find the police. You won't find the visibility. The MMC has, has uh, forgotten that uh, there, there were the Zamazama uh, killings in, in Rivali. And these are the things that we, we are warning as Rising Sons that we must not use these tragedies, these incidents as an opportunity for, for PR. We, we must look at lasting solutions. That's why we see this matter. That's why even with the, with the establishment of the of the Commission of Inquiry. Yeah. It's just a PR stand. It's a delaying tactic. Because, what, because I was about to ask you yes. on uh, particularly, what do you make of this uh, uh, you know, Commission of Inquiry? I mean, we've seen them come in. Mm. Obviously, there will be a budget that will be uh, included in that Commission of Inquiry. Do we really need it? You don't. <laughs> you need the forensics to go and investigate what caused the fire. You don't need the commission. You don't need lawyers to find out what caused the fire. Because if you establish a commission, the only beneficiaries of the commission are the lawyers, are the service providers. What you need is a team of the South African police, is a team of the National Prosecuting Authority, it's a team of the, of the human settlements to work together. We are already paying them, so there will be no need to spend extra millions paying lawyers and service providers to do the job that the current departments could do. So what, what that commission says to me, is that uh, Panyaza Lucifi says, I don't trust any of the people that are employed in the Gauteng uh, 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 provincial government that I have to put in lawyers that have no skill whatsoever in, 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 in forensic uh, investigation to come and, and, and do this particular work. That's why we say we need to put a team of uh, police, uh, police, policemen and women as part of organized crime. You need to find the NPA so that they work together to find these slumlords and the hyenas that are profiting from uh, these hijacked buildings. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, it seems like people want to criminalize the poor, whereas the people that are benefiting from this are, are working scot-free. So, so do you think that the city of Johannesburg has failed in addressing this issue? I mean, we've seen the issue of hijack buildings, uh, you mm -hmm. know, coming to the fore uh, over 10 years ago, you know, with the raids and all these kind of things. Do you think they failed? And also, uh, this syndicate, it seems like it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge syndicate that's operating in the city of Johannesburg because quite a lot of buildings are hijacked and nothing is happening. There's no doubt that the city of Johannesburg has failed. There's no doubt that the, the political parties that are in council have all failed. Because if you look in the last 10 years, almost all of them had uh, uh, an opportunity to be part of government. And nothing has changed in Johannesburg. In fact, the lawlessness in Johannesburg has gotten worse. So like now it's like everyone is scrambling to, to get closer to the mic to say, this is my solution, this is my solution. What have they been doing in the last 10 years? And that's why we're saying, you know what? It's time for the people themselves to rise and make sure that the, the city of Joburg is returned to, to law and order. Mm. 
what happens now? How should we hold people responsible? What needs to be done in order to make sure that we address this whole issue? Because now we are talking about it. As mm. you said, in the next few weeks, we would have forgotten about it. Like the, we are waiting for another tragedy. You know, what needs to happen is that the, the, the officials that we are paying from our rates and taxes must do what we are paying them to do. It's not a favor that they, they must go and inspect buildings and make sure that there's safety in, in those buildings. But somehow we have these officials, both from the city, from the province, from the police, from the NPA, who behave as if they are doing South Africans a favor. It's not a favor. We are paying them to do this job. That's why as Rising Zans, we'll never be in support of uh, this PR stance. That's why we're not even at, 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 the, at, the, at the scene because we see this almost like political parties jostling for the mic. You know, like we need to make sure that we serve the people rather than look for opportunities to, to be on TV. Just lastly, before I let you go, how, how do you think we can deal with the issue of illegality in the country? It seems like, uh, you know, mm. there's efforts, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that are at play. How do we deal with the issue of illegality in this country? So, so Tabo, one of the things that we need to do at the macro level, <clears throat> we must make sure that it, it's easier for people with documents to come to South Africa. Because we must never get into a, a situation where we want to close South Africa out. It must be easy for people with documents to come to South Africa and difficult as possible for people without documents to come in here. Now that we have people that might not have documents, we need to work with the embassies in South Africa to make sure that they get the documents so that we don't have this uh, uh, fight every time and say, all right, you find that in a building they are South Africans. But because they live side by side with uh, maybe undocumented foreign nationals, then we clap everyone as, a, as an, an undocumented foreign national. And that's what leads to the, to the fights, the burning and the killings that happens in, in, in our cities and townships. Magashu Legana, thank you very much for making the time this evening. Much appreciated. We really appreciate the opportunity. That was uh, the national organizer of uh, Rizam Zanti political party that uh, Makashule Ghana giving us the party's stance on the topical issue of hijacked buildings in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, the fire uh, at uh, Marshalltown, you know, came as no surprise to many citizens considering the state of buildings in the inner city. On that note, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us, so WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Malukwani, and the rest of the team, good night, and thank you for watching.